You were making your point. We were talking about cybersecurity, and I was asking you about this uh, uh, blockchain uh, usage, for instance, for the voters list. But you were making a point. Yeah. Well, to begin with, uh, a segment of that voters list has been exposed to the public as well. Yeah. If you recall the uh, Comelec case yes. in 2016. Yes, that right? was breach. So, yeah. Uh, the identities again of the voters are, are out there already. out in the public. Yeah. Right. But there is a way of creating, well, we have our national ID law, right? But then again, uh, it's not taking off uh, as much as is expected okay. of it, right? Uh, people do not even trust it because then when they ran out of cards to print the, the IDs and distribute them, uh, you the, 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 those who applied for national IDs were emailed a copy that they can print on yeah, on the piece, piece of paper. A, yeah. a piece of paper. Yeah. So again, the question of authenticity yeah. you know, comes into play. So who would believe it? Yeah, yeah. Right? So those, those are the issues that sprouted out of that uh, uh, what do you have, that, that incident, you know, of issuing electronic IDs that yeah. can be printed. Anyway, there's a solution as well that you and I can control okay. ourselves, not any other third party. Okay, not government, yeah. Not government, not the private sector. Okay. We can create what we call self-sovereign ID. Okay. One that we create, uh, we can put in our our information there, even our biometrics markers, we can put in there and secure it in blockchain technology so that it is amply protected. Let, let me put the question this way, you know, with the elections coming, next elections coming up in 2025, with what we saw with the last BSKE in October 30, and all of these new threats that we're seeing emerge from the rest of the world, like AI and cybersecurity, how should we start preparing? Uh, given what we learned, what we saw, given these new threats that we're observing now, where do we start for 2025? For 2025, again, let's, the Comlex should uh, look into the voters list, again, voters registration, okay. and ensure that it is clean. Okay. Right? Uh, from what I gathered also is for uh, the Comlex at least for the Barm area, the, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao, is considering a re general registration of the voters in that region. And I think that general registration uh, should be propagated nationwide. Okay. Right? Uh, the reason for that, because people doubt the list, right? Okay. Uh, in the last elections, uh, even, even where I reside, <laughs> In Pasay, they were saying, "Oh, these people are dead already." Why but they're still, still on the, the voters' list? list. Yeah, we had a complaint. We received a complaint, for example, that somebody voted for him. Wow. Okay. Okay. Again, so we have to clean up the list. That's one. A second is uh, we have to come up with mechanisms and teach the public how to create self-sovereign IDs. Okay. okay. That's going to be a challenge. How, right? how will that now help? the voters list or help in the electoral, electoral process then? It's some sort of, you have to have a system of knowing who... Uh, verifying people. Yes, yeah. verifying. And, I see, okay. And authenticating their identity, I see. right? Uh, That's interesting, okay. Right now, when, when you go to the polls, for example, as long as your name, your name is, is on the list, list they let you they, vote. Yes, they, they issue you a ballot and that's it, yeah. right? Except in cases where there may be challenges to your identity, okay. right? Uh, they don't even, the, the, the electoral board does not even ask you for your ID. Yeah. Right? But when it's, and then we're still paper-based. Yeah. There may be photos there, there may be thumb marks there. Yeah. Inks on your face. Who is trained yeah. to compare your thumbprint yeah. That you put on your ballot, the, the stub on your ballot, any, uh, and compare it with the yeah. one that's on record. Nobody. Do, do, you, do you think that you know we've, we've been overly focused on what kind of voting system we will have, whether it's Smartmatic or something else or hybrid, and that we're not addressing the more fundamental issues such as cleaning up the voters list, addressing vote buying, you know, uh, and as you said, creating an environment where people can freely join or not join, right? 
uh, or at least be encouraged to join the elect electoral process, at least at the from the grassroots level. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, we have to work on a lot of things. Okay. Uh, put in the, the necessary foundations. One okay. foundation for elections is, uh, again, the voters registration, the voters okay. list. Basic. In other countries, uh, you get into the voters list automatically once you hit 18 years old. Okay. <laughs> Here it has to you have to, you have to register, yeah. register and present yourself right. to the election officer KYC yeah yeah uh, and we go through the process of the elect election reg uh, registration board hearing right so that if somebody challenges the identity of uh, that you're that not the same person we, as you're saying you yes, are yes yeah. even the residency requirement has to be met right, right? so again as basic as that. Uh, years ago, I think in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, the, the commission uh, piloted and tested the voter verification machines. Okay. I think they should look into that as well. Okay. <laughs> Rather than rely on a paper list, right? Because you want a paper trail. Yes, you want a paper record, you want a paper trail. And again, like I said, the teachers that are not to train yeah. to... That's, not their, that's not their expertise, yeah. yeah. It's not their expertise. Third is setting that, the, the, the bigger challenge is uh, the political party system. Hmm. We, the, the, the political parties get active only as election approaches, right? So we have to develop, we have to push for the development of a party as an organization that we are familiar with. Okay. Right? Uh, political parties must have an organization. It has to have a structure. Uh, they have to have, you know, your, their ideologies, their advocacies should be made public. Uh, again, it's, it's reforming that whole political party system. Mm -hmm. That's also the challenge. Yeah. Right? Um, so that that reforms should be introduced to encourage more inclusivity, inclusiveness, as well as uh, participation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unlike in, in, in other countries, an ordinary citizen identifies himself as with this particular party. Right, right. right? We don't. Yeah. We, we don't uh, identify ourselves with uh, uh, ordinary citizens do not identify with a certain political party. Yeah, or an ideology. Or, or an ideology. Yeah. That, yeah. Right. So those are the things that I have to work on. Uh, what about education, do you think? Is there, do you think government should be putting in more resources for just like educating people about, you know, as you said, ethics and what's the proper way of doing things? Or, um, is that a worthwhile uh, investment? Or? Again, the voter education, for example, comes in only as we approach the elections, right? And yeah. it is the, the it consists of how to vote. Yeah, that, that's what it's I mean. Just the process. It, it, it shouldn't be like an ongoing process. That you it know, should be. Yeah. We should start working with our education agencies, the DepEd, Tesda, uh, uh, CHED. Right. And the academic community in general. Yeah, I mean, something as basic as how government is supposed to work. Yes. And, you know, what is your role as a, as a citizen, right? I mean, we have also to uh, educate our voters, the citizens, on the role of what, what are the roles and responsibilities of the mayor, for example, right. or the governor. So right. they have to learn that. Right. Next is uh, educating uh, or creating that framework where the, the voters can have a basis to decide on who to pick. Okay. It's not just, uh, big, one, one of the things that I was thinking of in the last barangay elections is asking those candidates who were approaching me, like, what's your role? Yeah. How much is your budget? And yeah. things like those. And nobody yeah. can yeah. respond to that question. Right, it right. was, if, if you want to run for that position, I get to examine you when you right. approach me. Right? You should know, yeah. Okay, so basic things like those we should learn. So 
NAFREL is starting to embark on that. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, that we have a training program for the youth, engaging the youth, getting them to participate, right? And we are hoping to grow that approach, monitoring the performance of the local government, uh, keeping track of the promises, for example, the local chief executive. Right his execution of his promises, whether he got delivered. So that at the end of the term, we can come up with, we, we have a scorecard. Okay. It, that says, this is how he performed. Okay. Now the citizens would have a basis to decide whether to re-elect him or right. choose somebody else. And so there's a record to look at. There's a record to look at. Yeah. So we're hoping to develop that data set yeah. so that citizens can, and, and we're hoping to, uh, propagate that idea of uh, teaching the youth how to monitor and participate. We're also looking at, uh, again, uh, we have another program you know, for training the trainers on how to be sentinels of the uh, citizens. Right. Bantay ng bayan. Right. We have a, a Maging Bantay ng Bayan program right. where we had delivered this in several occasions already, inviting uh, leaders to become trainers right. and propagate that. The challenge that we're seeing, however, is how to propagate it. Okay. How to capacitate those that we had trained to echo our training programs. Yeah. So what we're looking at is partnering with uh, academic institutions okay. so that we have a natural base. For one, the educational institutions have the expertise in putting together the... We have the content. Right. The expertise is in the educational institutions to come up with, put together in a curriculum, uh, develop the lesson yeah. plans. Yeah. Yeah. And you have the teachers there who yeah. can teach whatever. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying to develop that relationship also with academic institutions. So we've created already a network of schools. We started in Mindanao. We hope to replicate that in the Visayas and in Luzon. Well, I think on top of all that, I think we should have, we should do more interviews. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Lido, unfortunately, that's the time that we have. I, I appreciate your time. And uh, again, I, I, we're, we're wrapping this up, and I, I feel like there, there, there's more to discuss. And I, I do <laughs> say it more seriously that, that you know I think I think we should have a more regular discussion. But I do want to thank you for the time today. Before we go, you want to leave our viewers with a message? Again, it's it's a pleasure you know, uh, to be here. Uh, so the, I'll take this opportunity. When I took over the helms of Namfral, Namfral right? We identified areas to get Namfro more active because the, the issue that I saw was people were just commenting that we're there only during, during elections. elections. Yeah, but I said we have to do something. What we what are we supposed to do in between elections? Right. We've been doing actually good governance monitoring. We had time and again monitored, for example, the DepEd the Department of Health and the Procurement of Medicines. We've been invited by other government agencies to participate and monitor their procurement process. And we have to grow that, right? That's why we came up with that training program, Maging Bantay ng Bayan, okay? And our, I encourage our citizenry and our voters, everybody out there in the public, to participate in those exercises monitoring our local governments, monitoring our national government agencies. Make sure that the programs are properly delivered and put in place. Make sure that the money that is budgeted for certain activities are well spent. Okay. So we're enabling that. And, and we're inviting volunteers also to learn the content of our training programs so that they can also replicate it in you know in among their neighbors for example sure their circles of influence so that's part of the challenge of volunteering that's only one area that the uh, nonfil is looking at we're also engaging the youth we're developing uh, programs for more participation among the youth we are actually creating or we have created actually the nonfil youth right uh, if you would recall, uh, 
Yeah, there was talk of postponement again, yeah. again of the elections, which again, uh, a law was passed, but then was challenged at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, yeah. at that time, before the law, that law postponing the barangay elections then, uh, we had a set of youth already in Namfrel who issued their own statement wow, okay. against the postponement of the elections. And that's what we would like to see, the youth taking action participating in governance right so that's those are the two programs that we're working on among many others right so for those who are interested they can go to your facebook page or website uh we have a uh, navral has a fave facebook page so we have social media accounts on on well x used to be twitter yeah. we have uh instagram accounts you know, that they can look at uh, we have our web page as well, namfrel.org.ph, that they can go to. Uh, we have a volunteer page there that they, they can go and volunteer. Maybe they can register. Well, Lito, thank you very much. And I look forward to the next interview. That we'll